and welcome back to Otaku no Video, as always, thank you very much for joining me, where today I'm digging deeper into Pet Girl of Sakuraso, which might surprise you because Pet Girl looks like an ecchi series. And that's one of the things I actually wanted to point out with this digging deeper and start off with. Um, when I first started Pet Girl, I thought this would just be the standard ecchi series of the, uh, of the season. And to my shock and, and um, adoration, I discovered that it kind of masquerades as an ecchi series. It starts off that way to kind of reel you in and then starts in with these story elements that um, are quite remarkable. Also remarkable, the editing. Wow. Um, rarely have I seen an anime series uh, where the, the editing is paced so effectively throughout the entire series. Um, where, you know, for those wham moments, you get, you know, a camera holding on something, but never for too long. Um, and it just, it knows exactly how to, to, to move from shot to shot and from scene to scene. Very impressive. So what are the, th uh, some of the main themes of Pet Girl Sakurasso? Well, starting off, it's about doing something with your effing life. Um, it's actually about characters who are looking at what they want to do and going for it. Now, this is something that is often paid lip service to in other anime series, mainly, uh, interestingly, because the characters don't know what they want to do with their lives, or in some cases they do, but they're very conflicted about it. Um, Pet Girl is much more about that early phase where you know you want to, um, you know it's important to do something with your life, but you don't know what it is, you don't really do anything, and Pet Girl saying, no, go for it, see what happens. It's also about the difficulties of creativity, um, and a lot of the things about creativity that folks don't often talk about. Uh, for example, the, the sheer amount of work that's involved in creating something, and the fact that you don't get any credit for that. Uh, that you have to you know, keep on doing things, and do, keep on doing things, and no one is patting you on the back saying, good job, you're just churning through all this work to eventually get to some point. Uh, where you can release the thing or publish the thing, uh, and then folks are like, "Wow, that's really cool," um, but again, all that all that work, and it's just part of the process. All right, now I want to talk about some of the moments in Pet Girl that hit me over the head with a sledgehammer, kind of those wham moments in Pet Girl, and probably the the first one in terms of a moment itself uh, was when Jin uh, gets that or sees the the note on the hanging on the tree. Uh, and I start tearing up just thinking about that scene, that when the, he, the, the charm flips over and it's, I wish he'd notice me. Um, and I love the scene because you notice that these two characters like each other, you know, that they have that um, uh, childhood friend kind of relationship, but it's v mild and in the background. And that's the power of that moment, that they, they don't lead up to it um, you know, in a big way, but then suddenly you realize, oh my God, Gosh, she really wants him. Um, and he's completely oblivious, completely oblivious to it. And now that he sees it, what's he going to do? It, it's a perfect moment in, in, in a sense that um, it introduces a, a new element, which then adds more complexity and more questions to the relationships and to the story. And then that's contrasted with Misaka offering her nude body to Jin. And Wow, what a moment, because she is so wacky, she's so out of control. Uh, and then he comes home, he wonders what's going on, she drops the robe, and you realize that it is both an over-the-top moment. It, it, it is ridiculous what she's doing, um, but at the same time, she's serious. She's absolutely, you know, saying, okay, Jin, I'm ready for this to be a serious relationship. And this is one of the ways in which that happens. Um, and then, of course, there's the double wham of that moment when Jean walks away and says, I, you know, I'm not good enough for you. You know, you're too good for me. I, 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 I'm not enough of a man to be worthy of having a relationship with yet. I need to, you know, get my own stuff together first. Oh, what a powerful moment. And then the other characters call him on that and point out that, one of the themes is you know, doing something with your life, and they're saying, look, go for it. Do something with this, you know. Um, move forward with that relationship. It, it's kind of unfair to Misaka, and, or Misaki, rather. And um, they don't resolve it, you know. Jean doesn't then immediately turn back to her and say, okay, we're going to, you know. No. Um, he's still feeling that this is something he has to do. He has to wait until later. 
Uh, and, uh, you know, despite this very reasonable um, opinion the folks are stating about this, this thing, I love that they keep that unresolved, that they keep that as something that's, well, no, we're not going to go there yet. Maybe it's the wrong choice, but that's the choice I've made. Then there's the relationship between Sheena and Rita. Oh boy. When I saw that episode title, Hate, Hate, Love, I was so intrigued. And to see they actually go there. The fact that, that you know this girl's so jealous of Sheena, and Sheena just doesn't see it. Uh, and that when she sees it, she's horrified, because this is like her one friend. Um, and the whole relationship is based on jealousy and, and kind of hatred. Um, and I love the fact that, like, Rita turns, but she isn't suddenly totally healed. You know, she still has that intensity. She still has that flippantness to her, to, to her personality. She's still certainly a friend, um, and indeed they probably flip that a bit too quickly. But the fact that they, they still leave her with that personality that's still just a little bit rough, I, I really appreciate. Let me talk about Nanami for a second. Um, the fact that they built up that voice actor competition for so long and the fact that her um, consequences for that were so dire, and then to have her lose it, um, I thought was wonderful, again, for the themes of the work. This is about the fact that creativity is hard and you have to keep on plugging away at it and you don't know what that end result's gonna be. Um, and Nanami sees that. You know, th the worst thing happens for her, then she has to face what happens when you hit bottom? What do you actually do? And there's no deus ex machina to come in and pick her up and say, oh, well, but actually this other voice acting uh, group, you know, lets her in instead or whatever. No, she, she has to face the music. And I love the fact that um, her facing the music is an important part of her character's growth as well. I also love how they portrayed uh, her slow descent into exhaustion. The fact that she's always a driven person, but the fact that she does push herself too hard, and that's part of the, 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 the whole debate and the question about creativity. You know, you're going to have late nights working on things. How much is too much? At, one point, at what point are you pushing yourself so far that you're not being able to be there for the work? I also like how they handled um, Nanami's desire to, uh, to confess, and actually that whole little love triangle there. Um, the fact that the characters want to do it, but can't quite bring themselves to. Um, and I also oddly appreciated the fact that they left that um, an open question at the end of the series. That the characters now know what they feel, but they're not, uh, they're deliberately not going to start a boyfriend girlfriend relationship just yet. They decided, okay, no, I'm not ready for this yet. Um, but I'm going to keep moving forward on, on other uh, routes. I'm surprised because I thought that would really annoy me. But for some reason, Pet Girl handles that very well. Well, I, I know the reason. Uh, because they build up to those characters, and, and the, or those characters' um, relationships. They establish the fact that these characters like each other and that they are comfortable with each other. So there's no false dichotomy between either, you know, we're together as a couple or we're not. We can be friends. We can be part of this community um, socially together, and that's okay too. And we've got to figure out what to do with those relationships afterwards. I also loved the video game presentation. There's a great example of a series that, um, or a moment in a series, where they build up to this moment, and then you just get moment after moment of um, problem and resolution and question and answer and just this perfect little... Um, um, dramatic sequence uh, right in the, the middle of this series. We don't know what's, where, where it's going to go. And I also like the fact that the video game presentation could go any way. It could be a disaster and that'd be okay. That'd be a learning experience. Um, you know, it doesn't have to... You know, the stakes are high for them to be able to pull it off, but they're not high in terms of needing to do this to get to the next level. Um, it's very much like life. You have these little presentations. You have these little things that you do. That you do, and then they're over, and then you do something else. Um, again, it's very real. Let's talk about the characters. Um, starting with Sorata. Um, interestingly, there's actually not much to him as a character. Now, you do root for him, uh, and they do an impressive job of setting him up as a character who is kind of overwhelmed by things, um, and who is kind of trying his best to uh, stay above water. 
um, and who then grows over the course of the, of the series. He is the underdog in the, in the classical sense. And I appreciate the fact that they set him up as a character who basically has nothing. Um, he is trying to move forward from where he is, and he has no special skills. He's not some shonen hero. Um, he's just doing this thing because that seems to be the most reasonable thing to do at the time. And I think that was a, a smart move. Then there's Sheena. Again, actually not that much to this character. And so thankfully, we don't actually spend that much time with Sheena. She is almost there as a, um, uh, a, a comedic character a lot of the times, where she's kind of there to be the absent-minded one and to propel other characters to do other things. And I think, again, I think that, that was a smart choice. Then Nanami, who, if you couldn't tell, is probably the most interesting character to me of the, the rest of the cast. And partly because it's so rare to see a smart, self-motivated, disciplined girl character in an anime series who also does not have really any other hang-ups. Um, again, she pushes herself a little too hard. She um, can beat up on Serata a little bit too much. Um, but in general, she's a very, I mean, um, she's an impressive person in so many ways, where she, she's doing a lot of stuff on her own. It's very hard for her. And she doesn't complain. I mean, um, if you knew this person in real life, you'd be impressed by her. And I like that they created that kind of a character. Then there's Miss Saki. Wow, did they switch her up on us. Um, she was the token comic relief character until suddenly she wasn't, and boy, did it hurt. I mean, wow, was that just a punch between the eyes. Um, and again, I, I, um, they put her in just enough where you know where she's coming from, but she doesn't suddenly become the central character for long periods of time. Um, and this is important partly because, again, there's not too much to her either. Um, she has her dream, she's going towards it, but she has these other desires. Um, so we get just enough of that. Then there's Jean, who um, I thought was going to be sort of the comic... Uh, <clears throat> then there's Jean, who I thought would be a, another comic relief character, um, but he turned out to be mostly the voice of reason. And I appreciated that as well in terms of setting up this character that other characters could bounce ideas off of, and that he has his own things he's trying to do. And, and again, I like the fact that um, they could have made him just this voice of reason until suddenly his relationship with, with Misaki goes off the deep end and he has to deal with that. Um, and the fact that once Misaki shows interest in him, he comes face to face with his own personality. The fact that he's not the um, dashing playboy that he thought he was. He's not God's gift to women the way he thought he was. Um, and that now he has to clean up, and that's really interesting. And of course there's Ryunosuke and Rita. Again, not too much to these characters, um, but nicely inserted into, the, into the, uh, uh, the story to push things forward. So those are some thoughts on Pet Girl uh, and some of the things that I was very impressed by in the series. I'm sure there's more that folks will mention to me in the comments. Um, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.